Hello and thanks for joining us. My name's Ian Stroud. And my name's David Malone. And this is Hyperland. Hello, David. Hello, mate. I have no Hello. guest today, but I have brought with me my consciousness. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, and what are we going to talk about then? Well, you're going away to Norway for a conference mm -hmm. on consciousness, and it kind of made me think I was working on a series called Great British Journeys, but I was speaking to one of the researchers on it, and she had recently done the Manic Depression with Stephen Fry. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I remember saying to us, a journey into the mind has always interested me. Um, yeah. I think when I was younger, I had something, I might have mentioned it before, uh, the Alice in Wonderland syndrome, which was visually had little hands or big hands in a big room or a little room but also I noticed that I could have my eyes closed in a dark room and I knew it had started so it was something that was manifesting itself in the mind it wasn't right you know, you know what I mean so uh, that was the start yeah. but then through life um links with um autism and Alzheimer's it's just, I'm just fascinated in how the mind works and the idea of this consciousness Okay, well, there's two things there, and this that often get confused. Right. There's how the mind works, which sometimes grades over into how the brain works. Yeah. And consciousness, and they are really different things. Oh, okay. Because most of the world's brain botherers, you know, in all the universities, yeah, they're not inquiring about consciousness. Consciousness is just there. Yeah. And what they're trying to figure out is what is the brain doing with it? Which bits of what we do I... are happening? Which bits of the brain? So when I sort of say how the, 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 how the mind works, we're talking about electronic pulses and neurons and... and well, that's the, one way of the connection. Or, or, or you, yeah, or you can say, you know, when I think of uh, moving my hand and this bit of my brain lights up or... Yeah. Uh, I'm not, but that's not an inquiry into consciousness. I don't think I mean that when I sort of say how the mind works. Everyone gets confused this way. Uh -huh. um, you know, you're right. I'm going to be going to Bergen and we'll be talking to Anil Seth, who's a, a, a brain botherer from um, the brain botherer <laughs> from Brighton University. Yeah. Uh, a very very good one, uh, and he's got a book uh, which I've just read uh, called Being You. All right. Uh, a new science of consciousness. Uh -huh. uh, and on the same panel, I'm going to talk to Rupert Sheldrake, which would be a uh, lab book, The Cat Amongst the Pigeons. Um, and then uh, Tanya Lerman, who wrote How God Becomes Real. Yeah. And they're all, the whole thing is about is consciousness and is the mind purely inside the head? In other words, is it just something that happens in those neurons? Um, or if we want to talk about the mind and consciousness, does it also happen outside of the head? And there's lots of different ways of, of tackling that question. You know, someone like Andy Clark, who he also used to be at Sussex, I think he's now at Edinburgh now, would say no, lots of the mind is outside of the head. Wow. <laughs> well, because no, no, he'll no. say, you know, culture in a sense is... Uh, a product of the mind, but it's also how the mind actually works. There's a collective mind that we create that we all draw upon. The um, environment around the mind. They're, uh, they're, 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 yeah, the physical environment, but also that fabric of ideas, which yeah. we're born into. It shapes who we are. We, we absorb some of it directly into us, and much of the rest of it, we don't absorb it in, but we absorb the methods by which we can go out into culture and absorb something new. Okay. So he says, you know, to make a dividing line between what's in your head, the thoughts in your head and the thoughts which are outside your head, but we, we know how to go get them. He says that's an artificial dividing line, which isn't helpful if we're trying to understand how the mind and consciousness works. He says a lot of how the mind works for our species, we've managed to put it outside of our own heads but in a way in which we can constantly get it. So, uh, hang on a sec. So are, hey. you, are you sort of saying then that, and I'm stealing a bit from our nice South African scientist that you interviewed, is mm. there's the thought, the creative thought of 
of Glass's Spectacles. Mm -hmm. And that thought then is made into an item that is real. Yeah. And then that item exists, but it was a thought. So the thought is a real... Am, am I am I stepping into what you're talking about? Yeah, yeah, um, um, and it's it's a terribly vexed area because I mean consciousness is is the topic which modern science can't deal with. It just doesn't know how to deal with it because modern science, and I'm talking about modern Western materialistic reductionistic science, believes that everything can be explained by the stuff that it's made of <laughs> and the energy that. That makes those bits of stuff bounce into each other. Yeah, and that way of thinking about it has, in the several thousand years we've been using that way of thinking about it, got made precisely zero progress in explaining how that gets to consciousness. Yeah, there are essentially three basic positions. You can say, well, the reason we haven't made any progress, the reason we can't just be imagine at all how you get stuff that's put together in, a, in such a way that it goes, oh, hello, I'm here. Whereas all the other ways that you put stuff together, all the stuff that you've got around you in your house, computers, teapots, carpets, none of those ways of putting the exact same atoms together yeah. is ever conscious. And, and so some people will say that's because there is no such thing as consciousness. Consciousness doesn't exist. That feeling of magical feeling that you're not just stuff but that there's an immaterial you inside there and that you have these these phantom things which no one's ever been able to find called feeling. That, that's folk psychology and it doesn't exist. And so there, there, I've talked to people who say, you don't exist as a self and consciousness doesn't exist. It, you just think it exists. It's a, it's a, tr <laughs> a trick of them. Well, that, that's, that's a circle that just goes around and... Well, in a certain way, they would say, yes, and that's the circle that you're in, and you should just really wake up and smell the barbed wire. See, that's well, okay, okay, so hang on a second. Let's so that's slow, one. slow, slow, slow down. So that is number one theory of three that you're now going to tell me. Right, okay. okay, number one theory I disagree with. It doesn't exist. Right. Because, and, and, and although you're saying you don't believe it, I think, yeah, I believe you that you don't believe it. it. It doesn't feel right. No. But but they would back you into a corner saying, okay, if you can't make this special stuff out of matter and energy, are you imagining there's some pixie dusk? <laughs> dusk. <laughs> and and I, I use the word pixie dusk because that's one of the, the little... That's right. Which, yeah, which okay. that is used by that community to, to try and belittle anyone who disagrees with My you. intuition okay. says um, bullshit. <laughs> Yeah, that same group of people would say intuition doesn't exist. <laughs> yeah, I thought you were going to say that. <laughs> Good luck. Yeah, yeah, exactly. All right. All right. So then, okay. there's, then there's number two. Oh, who are is... number one? Who are number one? Just so I can clearly get that. Um, uh, they would call themselves eliminativists. Um, I think people like Dan Dennett would probably say consciousness doesn't exist. Yeah. Um, okay. I hesitate to, to, to name names in case they said, oh, no, mine's slightly different from that. <laughs> No, but you're talking to me, and I need things quite good. I need to put them in my little boxes because the other thing that comes into the into consciousness and the mind and how it works is autism, which yes. is another yes. thing okay. that I'm well, that's a, that, quite... okay. That's a whole other. Yes, subject. I know, I know. Okay. But, so, uh, but I'm so just number a, two, the I'm, middle, the middle one, yeah. um, is that uh, you can get consciousness from physical stuff because look, we're it, yeah, um, and. So they are still in the camp which says the world is made of just matter and energy. That's all there is, stuff and energy, interchangeable, as we know from, from Einstein. But nevertheless, two phases of the same reality, cold, hard stuff, um, hot, energetic energy. Yeah. And because that's what we are made of, they'll say, and we all know we're conscious, Yeah. Um, therefore, it must be possible to wire up atoms of iron and atoms of phosphor and carbon and oxygen and hydrogen, and, yeah. you know, in a really special way, it becomes conscious. And it's very, very complicated, and that's why we haven't got it. But, and then there's a subgroup within those people 
who are very, very impressed with our latest technology because it's something about humans. Whatever our latest technology is, particularly in the West, we always assume that that's going to be the key to who we are. So I think at some point people thought that we were made of clockwork or that it was going to be steam driven or something. <laughs> and then and then when they discovered electricity, of course, that was the key to consciousness. And now we've decided that it's digital computers. And so they, you know, AI, they believe that if you just can find new and clever ways of wiring up perceptrons and you know the the hidden layers of machine learning that eventually not only will you get will you get something that can beat you at chess yeah but that con can condescend to you when it does and go yeah i beat you yeah cleverer than you are but hey i'm really enjoying myself and you're having a shit day that they think that that will happen that's an article of faith because um to paraphrase Noam Chomsky, it doesn't matter how far you jump, it's still jumping. Jumping will never be flying. You can jump for a very long way, and, but it, you're fooling yourself if while you're in the middle of your jump, you say, look, I'm really <laughs> flying. No, you're not. You're jumping. So that, that would be described a little bit as a, a simulacrum. Well, yeah, I mean, the, the, you, the, there are people who say, look, you may, you may make something which looks... Um, Blogs like this. You know, that walks like a duck and quacks like a duck, but it ain't a duck. Yeah, um, okay. Uh, and then you get into endless arguments. Yeah. If, it, if it does always do what you what a conscious yeah. thing would do, isn't it conscious? And you'd go, well, you, you might want to treat it that way, but is it? How do you know? Is it is it inside actually, uh, is someone home, or is it just a really, really complicated set of cogs and flashing lights? Okay, so, so the, the, okay. the, and then there's the other side, the third argument. Okay, so the number two, number two, who are they? Uh, that's the mainstream. That's that, that's so, anyone who's dealing with AI, um, all the brain botherers, anyone who thinks that the world is made of matter and energy, and so are we, and mm. also says, and I believe I'm conscious. If you, I, if you can, if you believe all of those things, yeah. then you you have to think. So obviously, there is a special way of wiring matter and energy up to be conscious. And uh, those people will nearly always point at neurons and go, "You see, look, yes. you've got a brain. Right? It's a big old thing of origin in your head, and that's what you need." Yeah, I, I'd sort of say that the the middle ones at the moment would would certainly have an influence in convincing me that they are right, o only because of my own naivety and um no, no no i think you're being unfair to yourself no it's because it's they're a... saying look this is the scientific view and why should you believe us well look around look at all of the triumphs that science has yeah um got under its belt so they will say look have faith that we're right about this because you can see how much of, of the rest of the world we've been right about so this method this mm -hmm. world view has been right about so many things it's bound to be right about this too. It's just a really thorny, difficult problem. It's okay. a bit of scientism me for for the... yes, it is. Yeah, yeah. and um, but there are, and there are some people who I've talked to who do st strike me as just um, born again scientific zealots, right? Um, and I find them a bit tedious and worrisome. Um, and then there are others who I think they're just really interesting and clever people who, and maybe they're right. I yeah. don't know. Yeah. Um, but more power to the robo as they work stuff out. Because even if they don't discover the key to consciousness, on the way they seem to be discovering a lot of other really interesting stuff. So on this, I'm happy for them to carry yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, and then there's the group which largely goes under the, the name of panpsychism, um, although there are other terms for it as well. And that basically says you can't get consciousness from matter. So that's where they part company with the middle group. Yeah. And they say, and therefore, the only way that you could possibly have consciousness is if consciousness is a primitive, in other words. And what I mean by primitive is just one of the basic building blocks of the universe, which isn't made of anything else. It was then, you know, at the beginning. Yeah, matter is matter. You know, it's yeah. made of quarks. And you, know, you can talk about in terms of bosons and leptons and this ton and that ton. Yeah. But it's matter. And energy is energy. Okay, Einstein says they're interchangeable, fine, but it's a primitive. They're not it's not made of anything else. Yeah. And so these the third group will say, and consciousness must be like that. And the fact that we haven't found it is probably because we're not looking for it in the right way. 
because if you say, well, where's the consciousness, Tom, you know, like the electron, yeah. and they go, yeah, you're assuming that it looks like matter. And we've, we've just explained to you that it's not, it's its own thing. Yeah. And maybe it, maybe it's even stranger than dark matter or dark energy. You know, 90% of the physical universe is missing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's not made of the same stuff as, you know, the desks that I'm sitting on. Yeah. So if, you, if you're willing to accept that, you know, we got this far without even realizing it, and this, and oh, my goodness, there must be dark matter. And then we came up with an equation, and for no other reason than there's a, a number in that equation which can't be explained, we go, and there must be dark energy. Yeah. Well, they say, well, why couldn't there be consciousness? And the fact that we have no idea how consciousness fits with the other two, so what? We didn't yeah. understand how electromagnetism fit together for centuries, so what? Yeah, this. Those are the three essential schools. Well, the the third one reminds me quite a lot of, of religion and God and faith, and there's something there that can't be read. So we, yeah, and that's part of the problem in a we way. We kind of make up a, a a little. The first two groups like to characterize panpsychism as. Yeah, it's just it's just some weak will, sort of quasi religious <laughs> retreat into into mumbo jumbo and well, it's not well if it's not classified into a name named religion and it is yeah. just this thing that's there that people believe in that there's yeah. no way of measuring it you know what we can say god is okay so you don't like the fact that we can't measure it no no i don't i don't i'm i'm, I'm trying to just work out exactly this third lot i'm trying to summarize in my own head what it it's is. It's a very radical, it's a, it's a very radical approach um, that just says it's it's got to be something, it's just part of what the universe is made of. Yeah. And then the question is, how does it get expressed? Yeah. Um, yeah. And think of it this way. You can have a whole big load of gas um, in a huge, huge ball, and it'll look like Jupiter. Yeah. That is a massive ball of gas. And because there's so much of it, it generates its own gravitational field, so that by the t and, and pressure, so that by the time you, you know, if you plunge into it, it changes from gas to liquid, and in certain places be solid. But if you got even more of that gas together, it could turn into a star, and then it just seems to do something completely really different because Jupiter doesn't give off any light. It's there. It's dark. It's just matter. Yeah. Whereas there is a way of arranging matter such that it then does this thing which is completely unlike all of the other lumps of matter you've ever seen, which it starts to, well, we use the term burn, but it, it starts to convert itself into pure energy. Yeah. And that's that's a wild thing that it does. It's unlike anything else that matter does. But it just does it, and we now know it does it because there's just so much of it that the force of gravity compresses it down and it gets hot and it, it starts a nuclear reaction. Okay, is it possible by analogy that you could have consciousness in a mountain and it, it it's a big sort of dull, non-speaking kind of consciousness and then there is a way of wiring up conscious matter such that it is like us, but the actual awareness that consciousness itself is a given. What you're then arguing about is how is it that sometimes this consciousness expresses itself in in a human-like way or an animal-like way, yeah. and sometimes it doesn't. And then that begins to look very much like what the middle group is is spends their time doing, which is saying what. Well, Let's look at the wiring diagram. Why is yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. See, it, it, it's then the same project, but instead of saying, if we can find the wiring diagram, it creates consciousness. Yeah. Where it was none. And it becomes, maybe we can find the diagram that allows consciousness to express itself in the way what we recognize as animal stroke human consciousness. Well, that's always going to be a pseudo, -meat. A pseudo um, consciousness. I mean, that. <clears throat> Are we talking at the level of, you know, people sort of say anything that can be named as God is not God? Is that in, in terms of like anything that is 
named as consciousness is not consciousness. Are we are we at that realm of thought? I'm not even sure what that meant, mate. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> your, your mind works in very mysterious ways. I often think scientists should study you because you're you know, you would like the exception to almost every rule I know. Right, okay. <laughs> okay, well, no, just... It's like, it's like being in the presence of some kind of weird Liverpudlian Zen master. <laughs> Says these things, you go, wow. You expect I your think... little finger symbols go, ching. I, I, think, I think that's probably part of my... And I think to myself, I am not worthy. <laughs> I think that's part of my little um, goal in life. And I keep bringing up autism uh, for, for many reasons. And a lot of people who talk about consciousness and the mind and how it works and left and right and all this kind of stuff, they talk briefly about autism, but they seem to sort of... I, I'm almost as if they're sort of alluding to something. Like, I, I know I quite often will will try and maybe not ask a question, but kind of try and lead you into understanding what I'm talking about. And I think that's quite autistic. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe. I don't, I don't know. Uh, yeah, okay. And, and often I, I feel like I, I just misunderstand where you're trying to go. But that is because we are, in some ways, really, really different people. Yeah, yeah. Consciousness is such a strange topic, and it's so opaque to to most of the ways you approach it that it, it can lead you almost anywhere. Yeah, you, you have to try and just be clear about what you're actually talking about, because as it, so yeah. often people claim to be talking about consciousness, you know, and they're not. They're talking about the mechanisms inside the brain, yeah, or the mind, and they're not necessarily the same thing. Because some people think. That mind and the brain are the same and others think they're different the mind is in the brain and yeah but look i mean to, just to give you a, a, a small example you know that the the idea the seemingly most sensible idea because it's within our present reductionistic paradigm is that we think we recognize consciousness in well we, we think we're conscious and we recognize we think consciousness in other animals and then we say what do we and animals have in common we say yeah a brain Correct. and their neurons, and we sort of notice that the animals with the biggest brains relative to their body size seem to be the ones that exhibit the kind of behavior which we recognize as a bit similar to ours yeah. and and quite complex, and they can solve problems that we were impressed by, like opening doors or fitting square pegs in square holes and things, yeah. and we're very impressed by this. And we say in the ones with the smaller brains fewer neurons can do less of this so we so so then we say they have less obviously neurons are the key to being clever and also being conscious mm. and and that that seems reasonable and so we look at plants and we say they can't possibly be conscious because they don't have neurons now i think that's wrong i think there is a kind of consciousness it just uses mycorrhiza in a, a different physical mechanism but yeah. it, there's certainly information processing and i don't see why we should think that plants can only have information processing without consciousness, whereas we have information processing with consciousness simply because ours is done by neurons. Yeah. That seems odd. But look, there's a very famous example which comes from a uh, professor of pediatrics at Sheffield University, a man called John Law, but this is, um, it's been quoted by lots of people. I'm reading this from a me and McGilchrist book. Okay. And he relates, this is a really famous example. He, the, John Law, but this professor at Sheffield, he says, look, there's a young student at this university who has an IQ of 126, okay? He's gained a first-class honours degree in mathematics. He's socially completely normal, okay? Yeah. And yet, and this is the quote, the boy has virtually no brain, okay? We did a scan on him, and we saw that instead of the normal 4.5 centimetre thickness of brain tissue between the ventricles, you know, the... the yeah. Um, and the cortical surface, there was just a thin layer measuring a millimeter. It, his cranium is filled mainly with cerebrospinal fluid. Okay? So I can't say, let's just continue the quote, whether he has a brain weighing 50 grams or 150 grams, but it's clearly nowhere near the normal of 1,500 grams. Wow. So 
Yeah. If you are utterly convinced that being clever is simply how many neurons you've got, yeah, or that it's not just how many neurons, but but the complicated way that they're wired together, yeah, how do you account for that? I don't know, but I'm I'm a way to weigh my brain now. <laughs> and and then people will say, okay, it's not just the amount of of, of neurons, yeah, although they will quickly retreat to talking as if it was when you start getting around with animals. That's how it's how how well they're wired up. And that also doesn't work because the the bit of your brain called the um the cerebellum, which is the the little brain at the back of your head. Yeah. That bit of the brain is far more densely wired up than any other part. And yet that bit of the brain can't sustain consciousness. So where does that leave this theory that it's to do with neurons and the number of them and how many, how complicated yeah. the wiring? These are just basic facts which really shake that set of assumptions, and they are just assumptions. Yeah, I kind of think there's a consciousness in the brain, but I think mm -hmm. I, I like to think that I'm, I'm probably a bit of a tree huggery thing that that a mountain can have conscious yeah well then then you're on the panpsychism side but i don't think a stone yeah. has <laughs> all right okay hold on hang on so there's a mountain right? yeah and it's conscious now i'm going to go up there with my rock hammer and i'm going to chip off the stone and bring it back to me and right and, uh, so yeah if it doesn't have consciousness this, this... were you saying the consciousness in the mountain was in the heart of the mountain in the the deep bowels of the mountain and the special crystal yeah yeah well, or I, I, I kinda... is it in the whole mountain and if it was then surely my stone's got a little tiny bit of it yeah. yeah and the weird thing then it gets even weirder is if i took that stone and i used it as a glaze on a pot yeah but then does my pot now have some consciousness <laughs> So then, is the mug that I'm having my tea out of in some way consciousness because it's made of, yeah, rock. Yes, it's made of that. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. You know, and so, it, you know, and therefore my light bulb because that's made of silicon. Well, it's made of glass and yeah. a bit of metal. And so, yeah, and all it says to me is, all bets are off. That the only people that I really worry about are the people who go, oh no, I've got the answer. It's completely obvious, and anyone who doesn't agree with this is obviously, you know. Just believes in pixie dust. Yeah, it's those people. Okay, they they got no basis for their rampant certainty. certainty. Yeah, yeah. Okay, David so, Malone, um, yeah. can you tell me what consciousness means to you? Yeah, I can tell you what it means to me. I have no idea where it comes from. I agree with 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 Nagel that consciousness of the kind which I recognize in in um, living things is where it seems to me to be something to be that thing. So it's it must be like something to be a bat, okay? Yeah. Now, when I look at a mountain, ordinarily I would say, I don't know that it means anything to be a mountain. Panpsychist would say it's conscious, or it has consciousness. What I don't know is if consciousness always brings with it uh, a self-awareness of it being something that it's like to be me. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I, I, yeah, I yes. Consciousness yeah. and self-awareness are not necessarily the same thing. I don't know that for certain, but that's how I think I must be thinking because I, I'm i perfectly open to the panpsychism idea that or panpsychism, that's another version of it, that consciousness is a fundamental in the universe, and then what we're arguing about is how it gets expressed. That's um, that's that's what I was going to sort of say. If you're sort of saying it's believed that it's there at the beginning, it must be there in other things. Yes. You could then say, so was the universe at the beginning conscious? <laughs> and and panpsychism would say, well, consciousness was in the universe, certainly. Yeah. And McGill would say at the very beginning it was consciousness, and then it 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 turned into matter and energy as well. And this is where I I go back to my whatever you think God is, it, it can't be because, and that's where you, I oh okay, to... I'm beginning to see where you're going there. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. But 
Fucking but hell, seeing yeah. that there's consciousness <laughs> in the universe to start with yeah. isn't necessarily making the claim that that consciousness was wired up, to use that me metaphor, in such a way that the con that the universe said, oh, hello, I'm a universe. Yeah. It may be that consciousness, in order to express itself, does require clever ways of being wired up. The same way that matter can suddenly produce electromagnetic waves of energy if it's in a big enough lump that it turns into a star. Yeah. So it could be that there was consciousness in the universe, but not but that consciousness was not necessarily aware of itself in a way that it could express in any way. Because I think part of the problem is the English language is particularly poor in words to help you talk about the whole business of consciousness. I mean, the ancient Greeks had more words for it than we do. Yeah. Um, so, you know, is it right to lump awareness, the ability to express self-awareness, all in with consciousness? Or are they related to each other the way that water, ice, and steam are related to H2O? So they're all made of H2O, you know, yeah. two hydrogen atoms bonded to an oxygen atom. But they they express themselves, they manifest in different ways. And maybe consciousness and self-awareness and self-consciousness are different manifestations and require different physical underpinnings to express themselves. And we just don't know the answer to that. Yeah. And I think it's fine to not know the answer. I think what's not fine is to say, well, because we don't know, it doesn't exist. <laughs> That bit bothers me. I, I can't deal with that. Oh, but science will find out one day. Yeah. Well, I think science, in the hands of really good scientists, will make some progress. Scientists in the hands of second-rate pedants won't. Yeah. Going back to what I was saying about autism, and it seems to... It, it comes up a lot of times when we're talking about mind and consciousness and things like that. Mm. Why, why, when I hear about it, does whoever's commenting on it seemed to be doing what I was saying before about sort of taking the conversation so far and then it just seems to shut off. You mean the conversation about something like autism? Yes. Well, I, yeah, it's, it, it's a complicated question. I, th I think historically it's certainly been the case that there's an assumption of what normal consciousness, normal brain functioning is. Yeah. And then there's various kinds of abnormal. And people would say schizophrenia is abnormal. Uh, and then they would, traditionally, they would lump everything else. Depression's abnormal. Uh, uh, autism is abnormal. And so they would say, well, it's a sort of a side street, a sort of a cul-de-sac. Yeah. You go in and say, well, it's not working. Things have changed a bit now. And people talk about neurodiverse. And it's one of those useful terms which I think it is useful, and but it can quickly become the opposite and not be very useful. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. You know, and it, the, and it, they it, used to, they, they used to describe um, they used to think autism was sort of like childhood schizophrenia. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, the the the, the problem is that they don't really have a good definition of any of these things, and uh, they're not separate things. It's like it's like the color chart, you know the color wheel that you get on your computer where yes you know it's it sort of yeah. <laughs> sit in one direction it grades into deeper and deeper red and then another one to deeper and deeper blue and yeah. as you go round red turns into green turns into yellow turns into blue the the different ways that the mind works are a bit more like that yeah um and you can say well let's draw a little circle in the middle and that's normal well uh, okay yeah <laughs> you could yeah but i'm just not sure that's I, I, yeah, that's I, not really. I'm, how, I'm not yeah. sure that's terribly useful yeah. because you know you, you can find people who, um, you know, it's that phrase is on the spectrum. Yes. Sometimes we use that to mean people who are socially difficult. They find it difficult to interact with other people, and it is difficult for them in this society. Yeah. And then you can point to some 
tremendously rich billionaire who seems to have virtually all of those things that they're difficult with with other yeah. people you know they're, they're, it's they're usually awkward. yeah 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 it's obvious that minds work in lots of different ways and lots of minds have different weaknesses and strengths who they're good at some things and not so good at others there's a yeah. trade-off that, that seems clear but you know you can get so you know so right on that then you can't put a label on anything but I'm fascinated with the way the mind works and whether people on the spectrum, as you said, um, mm. actually understanding their, their, well, wealth, their, their, their world, the way that they exist, the way they see the world. Yeah. And you don't have to be condescending and say, well, it's not so good. No, I'm, I'm not. I'm, I'm the opposite. I'm, I, know, I know you don't, but yeah, I'm yeah. saying it's, it's not necessary. I mean, one of my best friends was colorblind. Yeah. But it was one of the cleverest people I ever knew. Yeah. So, uh, was he disabled? No. <laughs> well, he was cleverer than me. He was so, a bit, a bit of shit at the traffic lights, though. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, <you know. laughs> exactly. So, uh, you know, I, I the mi minds work in very different ways, and I, and I and I don't think saying well this per this is normal and everything outside is is abnormal. Yeah. You know that. I don't think that's terribly helpful. But at the same time, there are ways in which the mind can start to work, which make the person who has that mind deeply, deeply, deeply unhappy and yeah. in ways which, if left untreated, will kill that person. Yeah, yeah, no. No, so I'm sorry, I'm not willing to just say, well, they're, neuro, you know, they're neurodiverse. Yeah, not, yeah. No, I've... I've, I've well, I've, I've, mind I've... is now not working very well. It's working in a way... It's working it's perfectly shortened. well, but you don't understand it. Mm? It's working perfectly well, way in a way that people don't understand it. Is what I is how I would see it. But yeah, okay. But if they are deeply unhappy, is it enough to just say, "Well, it's just working in a way I don't understand"? Or should I say, "I'm not. I don't want to leave the person with their mind working in this way I don't understand because I want it to change back to something." Which seems less painful for them. Yeah, is that wrong? Well, it, I, 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 yeah, it's it's an interesting thing that I've been asked a few times that if there was a cure for autism, you know, um, do you do you take it? Mm. And I cure that. What's your answer? And and what is my answer? I, I, I again, it would be. <laughs> Whether on that spectrum you are, and how unhappy. I mean, it was it was a bit like with my dad and dementia. I'd go and see him. Mm. I probably at times where he was showing um, a greater degree of of uh, dementia, I was mm. the one that was leaving in that sad state. I don't think he, you know, I don't know. I I I don't know what he was thinking. I don't know what his mm. state of mind was. So it's it's again it's it's a bit like your you were sort of talking about the mind and how it's working. A lot of things are taken from our own consciousness, our own mm. um, scale of judgment in terms of well, you know, a stone can't have consciousness because it doesn't show it in the way I understand consciousness is shown. So therefore, yeah. it hasn't got it, and a, a carrot. Well, a current doesn't show consciousness in the way that I show it. And so, yeah, I, I, I think there's something beyond just being able to see things from our own perspective. Sure, I, 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 I agree. And, and it's, it's easy to take any of these ways of uh, talking about things. And if you take them, if you stretch them, you can see how um, wrong they become, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, it, it's not hard to take the neurodiverse argument and say, well, if someone is suicidally depressed, do we just say, oh, they're just neurodiverse? Yeah, really? yeah, yeah. I don't think so. No. They're real. Their mind is, I'm not willing to say, oh, it's just a different way the mind works. No, I'm no, saying, I, I'm No, not... that's a mind that's broken in some way. Yes, yes, I agree. But, you know, um, if you go the other direction and say, well, yeah, there's just the right way for minds to work, then do we find a cure for autism? Do we start tinkering with genes to make people 
all people's minds work the way that we've decided that the normal mind should work. And that didn't hope at all. <laughs> what is that? Uh, both of us have been for the chop. Um, so, yeah, it, I, I'm, it, it just says to me that it's, it's thinking that because we can put a word on it, that that word is pointing to the only path to truth mm -hmm. is, is wrong. They're, they're, they're labels which are useful in some ways and not in others. And I think you just, the categorical way of thinking, like if, if normal exists, then that's the only thing that's good. Yeah. That kind of, or, you know, if neurodiverse exists, then we should only talk about things in terms of neurodiversity. They're both kind of a categorical kind of thinking, which seems to me self-evidently to lead you off, you know, yeah. into the wilderness. So that way of arguing, that way of thinking just seems to me itself to be the problem. <laughs> okay, we'll wrap up consciousness for us and then um, we'll say good night. <laughs> well, I think we can only wrap it up by coming back to it because it's a fascinating subject. Yeah, I'm firmly convinced we've all got it, except possibly for a few members of Parliament um, <laughs> who may have had it Don't. surgically removed. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's it, it, it's fascinating, and there's so many ways into it. And you know, I'd like to talk about some of you know, like the Lerman book and and, and her stuff, and talk more about. Um, this is Tanya Lerman. Daniel Lerman, and yeah, I'm going to be talking to her and then Seth and Dan Dennett, and they're all fascinating people. The one with Ian, I think the How To Academy is going to put it up in a month or so, so we should keep an eye out for that. And then, I well, we'll find some, it off. some way. It, of... it, it was a great discussion, although we didn't discuss consciousness because there's so much in his book, The Matter With Things, that we we covered a huge amount of ground, but we didn't cover that. Yeah. So, and maybe. When his speaking tour becomes slightly less hectic, um, I'll be able to convince him to come on. Oh, that'd be yeah. brilliant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, if, if, what you could do is you could just get him to sort of send every every month, just sort of send a thought for the month. <laughs> and he can just record it on his phone and send it to us, and we'll put that up, and that will say, all right, <laughs> going through 45 minutes of... <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right, mate. All right, well, that's it for the moment. I think we've probably confused ourselves and everybody else now. Well, my my ha, ha, yeah, my my brain, my mind, mind, my consciousness is aching. <laughs> it might be bleeding inside. I'm not too sure. <laughs> All right, mate. Well, I'll talk to you the next one. Okay, buddy. Do you want to do the um, thanks for listening? And no, you're so good at it. Ah. Oh. Go and, go and um, Google, not Google, search um, Substack, David Malone, and leave a little message. I'd love to hear what people think of consciousness and, and whether we are complete, well, whether I'm a complete crackpot. Thanks, David. Cheers, mate. Talk to you next time. Okay.